Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's your girl Chrissy Pips. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing a training that I did recently um, for part of my organization where I went over some of the things that my team and I are using for crypto security and it gives you a couple hints and tips and whys as well. Okay, so let me know in the comments below if you guys like this type of information. Let me know if you would like for me to share more of the things that I do with my team in the organization. Um, Cause you know, I'm okay with doing that. Um, and you guys, I hope you're having an awesome and productive day. As always, if you're here, you're interested. So let's get into it. This time what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn this call over to you because of where we are and what we're going, you know, in the space right now, security is so, so key and it's so, so important. And I just really wanted to make sure that you all got fed just like I'm getting fed and you know all of the inside tips. So Chrissy, at this time, I'm gonna turn it back over to you, darling. Chrissy Pips Security 101, protect yourself, let's go. <laughs> Thank you. So now you guys know why we're here, right? So really quick, how many people have already gotten started in cryptocurrency? Go ahead and put a one in the chat for me. We got 80 people on the call. This will give me an idea of how deep we need to go. So if you are already in crypto, put a one. If you are not in crypto, put a two. Let's, let's kind of figure get a feel for the audience, okay? So we got a two. Thank you for being honest. We got a couple twos. Okay, perfect. So we got a good mix. Perfect, perfect. So. Did you start out your cryptocurrency journey using PayPal, Acorn, Webull, or Robinhood? If you started out using one of those apps, if you currently have cryptocurrency in one of those apps, put a three in the chat for me. If you are using one of those for cryptocurrency, go ahead and put a three in there. Let's see, let's see. I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping we don't got no threes, but if we do, we don't have any threes, okay? Thank you, Cal. Listen, I see Cal. Okay. Let's see if listen. I could interject, if I could interject for yes. a moment for the ones that did put the twos in there by the end of this call, that they're going to see why they will now be turning that two into a one. Oh, yeah. They need to be in this space. Absolutely. With right. Me. And Christopher, this is for you. Okay. Thank you for being honest. But if you are using one of those apps for your cryptocurrency, it's okay. We gonna help you get it together today, though. Okay, so we do not use PayPal, Acorn, Webull, Robinhood for cryptocurrency. The reason for that is because you don't have the ability to transfer your cryptocurrency out of those apps. You don't have ownership in those apps either. If you purchase crypto there, you don't own anything. So we we really want to make sure that inside of the cryptocurrency space, we have ownership. Okay. So we're going to I'm going to give you guys a few direct quotes um, from some of the websites because ownership is key at the end of the day. So I did my due diligence and I'm going to ask you to do the same. Make sure that you do your research. Don't trust anything that anybody says, not even myself. Do your research, read it and make sure that you've seen it with your own two eyes. When I went to PayPal's website and you look at the terms and conditions section, it says you're currently not able to send crypto assets to family members or friends, or withdraw crypto assets from your cryptocurrencies hub, right? If this is an app that people use to send money to and fro, to receive money, to do transactions, but we can't use cryptocurrency to do transactions, this isn't the best place to, you know, park your crypto, okay? Acorns was the same thing. If you look at their terms and conditions on their website, the first thing says, does Acorns invest in cryptocurrency? Their answer is very direct and straightforward. It says, we do not, okay? If they don't invest in cryptocurrency on their app, why do you? And these, this is just the, the thought process that I'm going through while I'm looking at some of these apps. With Webull, it's the same thing. You can buy and sell cryptocurrencies on Webull, but you they don't have the ability to support the transfer so if you can get it on there but you can't transfer why are you getting it on there right Robinhood is the same way coin withdrawals at this time they do not have the functionality to allow customers to transfer their cryptocurrency assets into or out of Robinhood's crypto account okay so it's very 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 important 
that you plug in. Listen, if you are new to this information, if this sounds new to you, do me a favor and don't worry. You're going to take some notes. Make sure you got pen and paper. Okay. Inside of Kurt's favorites, we have a list of priority videos to help you with security. Um, inside of the security video, the one caveat is we did used to use the Coinbase wallet app, but we have replaced that with MetaMask. So anytime you hear him say Coinbase wallet, just think MetaMask because that's what we do now. But understand that you have access to one of the top cryptocurrency educators in the world right now. Make sure that you're plugging in. If you're not plugging in, make sure that you go back and watch those sessions. If you can't hop on live, we know that. We know people work, right? But everything's recorded. Everything's up for 10 days. Watch those recordings. And then these videos are in the favorites so they never disappear, okay? So let's get started. So how many of you have heard of SIM swaps? So a SIM swap is when your SIM card and your cell phone is duplicated on another device. 99.9% .9 of the time, this is done without your knowledge. If it's done, it's done without your knowledge, right? And this is kind of what it looks like, okay? So they get, like they attack or they call your cell phone provider, okay? Because they've somehow gotten your information from one of the breaches that happened. I know T-Mobile had one, Verizon had one. These things happen, right? So now they have your information. So they're calling your cell phone provider and they're saying, you know what? I need this information switched over. Here's the number to the device that I need to switch over to. Now they have a duplicate of your phone. Okay, so this is bad, but we have some things that we can put in place to prevent this from happening. And if it does happen, we can prevent it from being bad. Okay, so one of the biggest things that I want everybody to do for me, the first thing that you that you do, how many of you guys have like personal information that you protect, just like you protect your social security number? A lot of you have like just anything it, and it doesn't have to be a social security number. It doesn't have to be like your bank account number, right? If you have things that you protect the same way that you will protect your social security number, I need you to go onto those websites and I need you to activate something called two-factor authentication. And the way that we do that is you go into your settings and you change it. After you do that, I need you to download this app. It's called Google Authenticator. Don't let the name fool you. It's not just for Androids is for Android, iOS, and even BlackBerry, okay? This uses a time-based password algorithm. And all that means is that every 45 seconds, it's gonna give you a new code. So when I was like back working, I had a account, I still have my stock account through Fidelity, right? If I log into my Fidelity account, it's gonna ask for my username and password. If I log in on my phone, it's going to ask for my thumbprint, right? But because technology has advanced, because those nefarious characters have gotten a little bit more smart than what we would like for them to be, we need to put things like this in place. So after you put in your username and password, or after you use your thumbprint, it's going to ask you for the six-digit code from your authenticator app. This code recycles every 45 seconds. So if you put it in too slow, you're gonna have to wait a couple seconds for the new one to pop up, okay? But every 45 seconds, this is what you use after you've gone to your bank accounts, your credit union accounts. And like I said, anything that you have that you would protect, like your social security number, you're going to activate two-factor authentication. And then if it gives you the ability to use Google Authenticator, you're gonna use this app. It's on your phone. Even if your, the SIM swap happens, this is something that can be protected because it's not linked to that thumbprint. It's not linked to that username or password. It's linked specifically to that phone's information. Okay? So do me that favor. Now, y'all know about Proton Mail. Everybody knows about Proton Mail. But one of the things that we don't actually get a chance to talk to um, when you see Kurt on Go Live or if you see me on Go Live going over anything, it's certain pieces that we can't really talk about because it's only an hour and a half, right? So if you have Proton Mail, congratulations. If you have Proton Mail and you have Gmail as a backup, are bad. 
I'm just going to apologize now. So the thing that, that we do inside of our organization, inside of our team, is we do use Proton Mail, but we also use a secondary Proton Mail email because they are free as the backup to our primary. And I don't have one primary. I have four primaries, right? I have one for all of my bank accounts. I have one for all of my brokerage accounts, Forex, HFX, crypto, whatever those brokers are. I have one for that. I have one specifically for cryptocurrency information. And then I have another one for just private information for the business and things like that. So I have them separate. So you can never get all of my information from one place. And I have a Proton Mail that is the backup for all of these. Okay, because when you create your account, it's going to say, what's your backup email? What, how do you recover it? Well, you don't want to use a Gmail because we're trying to get away from Gmail. So you can use Gmail as the backup to your backup. That's fine. That's perfectly okay. But for these, the primaries, for the ones that you're using, like for everything else, make a Proton the backup. But do me a favor. Please, please, please understand that Proton Mail is a way to future-proof yourself. As the cryptocurrency space gets bigger, there are going to be more bad actors that show up in this space. And those bad actors are typically hackers and other nefarious characters. And we want to protect ourselves. Okay? So... It, it feels like overkill right now, but the first time you see like a security breach notification, you'll be very happy that you did this. It's free for you. You can pay for like the paid version of Proton Mail. You do get additional features, but it's not necessary. Okay. Your information is encrypted. Like, do you guys know why people use Swiss bank accounts? Like if anybody knows why you use Swiss bank accounts, just type a yes in the chat for me. Let's see. And I'll tell you, like, the reason why people use Swiss bank accounts specifically is because Switzerland has a government rule where they will not export information. Like, our government cannot go to them and say, I demand that you give me Chrissy Pip's account information from Switzerland. It's not possible. Their government doesn't allow it. Okay. These Proton Mail emails are Swiss based. They are also cryptocurrency backed. Okay. This is encrypted email. What that means is if I were to send Auntie Jay an email, the people at Proton Mail cannot open it, read it, or see it. They only know that information went from me to her. What that means is they cannot sell your information. They can't share your information. They can't see your information. But there is a caveat. The caveat is, since it's all encrypted, they also cannot help you reset your password. Okay? So when you're creating your Proton Mail, please write down your username and password in more than one place. Um, what I use, and I'll see if I can pull it up. It's somewhere around here on my desk. What I use, remember those uh, phone books with the little tabs with all the letters on them? So that's what I use for my passwords because it allows me to keep my passwords in alphabetical order and they're safe, okay? I encrypt my password information when I write it down. If I write down, like usually I suggest for you to write out your passwords as a phrase, followed by some numbers, followed by a special character. If I write mine out, I have very funny phrases that I like, right, a Rolodex. I have very funny phrases that I, that I write out, right? And inside of what I write down, though, the letters in between are asterisks because I know what the phrase is. It's a very nonsensical, funny thing that makes me giggle every time I have to type it. But when I write it down, it's written down, capital letter, asterisk, 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 capital letter, and then I put asterisk on the top or number sign for numbers and then the special character. So even if you get my password book, you still can't decipher what my passwords are, okay? That's like a pro tip from me to you. That's how I do it. Um, my cousin um, has the key to my passwords. And I'll tell you guys later why, okay? But 
pro tips for your proton mail is please don't make a Gmail to back up, make a proton mail the backup to that. If you've already used the Gmail, please just go ahead and update the information. If you haven't used a proton mail for some of your cryptocurrency exchanges like Kraken and things like that, please just log in and update the information. If you're using the Exodus wallet, you cannot change the information in your Exodus wallet. Oh no, it's fine. Um, you can either create a new wallet and start to transfer over as we have more gains in our portfolios and you're willing to pay those fees. They're not high transferring from one wallet to the other because it's the same asset, but you can do that or you can just not worry about it at all. That particular wallet is extremely safe and you never receive an email from Exodus ever, okay? But definitely do yourself a favor and, and do your security. My team did this. We were extremely upset because it took us a week to complete, but do it. You'll, you'll thank me in the long run. Now, as far as security goes, what is a public key, right? Public keys are extremely important. And the easiest way I can explain a public key is going to be a public key is your email address or your home address. You give out your email address or your home address. It's perfectly okay for everybody in the world to email me. That's fine. What I will not be giving out is my private key, which is equated to the password to my email or your house key. Or if you have one of those crazy locks on your door with the pin code, you won't be giving that out either. So if you are looking at emails and you're getting involved inside a cryptocurrency space, understand that you will give out your public key. You will never give out your private key or your seed phrases, okay? When you're getting involved in the cryptocurrency space, you're gonna write down a lot of things you're gonna write down your private keys to your cryptocurrency because that gives you ownership. You're gonna learn that there are websites that you can get cryptocurrency from like Coinbase that don't give you your private keys. So it's not good to keep your crypto there, right? I'm just, I'm gonna repeat that because it went over some. There are some websites, it's perfectly okay to get your cryptocurrency from like Coinbase, but they don't give you your private keys. So we don't save it there, okay? Now, understand that each website or exchange or wallet will not hold all 10,000 cryptocurrencies that are in the space. So there will definitely be some instances where you have no choice but to leave your cryptocurrencies on an exchange. That's perfectly okay because we understand that that happens. But try to get into the habit of not leaving more than about $100 on Coinbase. It is a website. If it goes down, your money is stuck right? And try to do your research and find those wallets that are safe and secure. We give those to you and go live, but try to find those wallets and those places to hold on to your cryptocurrency that give you access to your private keys so that you have access to also your seed phrases. Now I'm going to tell you guys, there's a thing about writing down your private keys and your seed phrases, do it and do it more than once. OK, you can go to the Stonebook website, you can get a Stonebook, you can get the ghost pen. And fun fact, if you use the code Chrissy Pips when you check out, you actually get 20 percent off. Yeah, I have a discount code for this. So, yeah, instead of paying 60 dollars for your orders, like 48 if you need both. Um, but inside of the cryptocurrency space, you might want two of these. OK, now this is where that key comes into place. Like I was telling you, my cousin has the key to some of my information. If, God forbid, I was to pass away tomorrow, right? And I have all of my passwords written down. I have all of my seed phrases and my keys written down. But nobody has access to that information, that encryption that I have for my passwords. Nobody can get to it. So... What I've done and what I've been helping a lot of chairmen do, what I tell my team to do, is we get two stone books, okay? We split our private keys in half. Usually your private key is a 24-character, alphanumeric character code, okay? 
So if it's 24, 12 goes in the book and then 12 goes in the other book, you never put all 24 in one. If you have C phrases that you're writing down, usually it's 12 or 24 phrases, entire words. You put six in one, six in the other, 12 in one, 12 in the other. And if you have something like a lawyer or someone who handles your estate, you never give them both of those books because you've essentially given them access to all of your cryptocurrency, okay? So it's very important to understand splitting them is for your benefit. My cousin, I trust her, but I'm only giving her half. My lawyer, I pay him and I'm only giving him half because in the event that something happens to me, they both have to come together in order to get everything finished, okay? So that is, that's, that's like a nice little pro tip for y'all. If you have the stone book, the stone book is tear resistant, water resistant. The ink on the ghost pen lasts like a hundred years. Um, so it's perfectly okay to use what, what we do on the team is we buy fireproof boxes and you put that book and that pen inside of a fireproof box. Or if you have a safe in your home that's fireproof, you would put it in there. Um, but in the event that something happens to you now, you have a safe place to put your private keys. You have a safe place to put your passwords. You have a safe place to put your seed phrases, okay? And now you don't have to worry about because shady people pop up everywhere. You don't have to worry about a, a shady lawyer getting access to your private keys and logging into one of those exchanges saying, I forgot my password. Let me log in and restore my wallet with all of your information, okay? So it's to protect yourself that you split this type of information up. If you are a married couple and you have cryptocurrency together, I love you. I love your love. I am happy that you guys are as in love as you are. But each of you should have your own wallet. I, and I tell this to married chairwomen and chairmen all the time. Just because your wife has Exodus doesn't mean you have Exodus. Both of y'all need to have your own Exodus wallets, right? Both of y'all need to be in control of your own private keys, be in control of your own seed phrases, okay? I love you. I love y'all love. It's beautiful. But crypto, I'm just, we can move on though. Chrissy Pips, 20% off. Okay, remember your crypto is not safe until it's in a wallet that offers private keys. Okay, like it's a big thing, private keys. Now let's go over hot wallets versus cold wallets. That is the question, right? And some of y'all don't know what the difference between hot and cold wallets are, so we'll break it down. Hot wallets are connected to the internet, cold wallets are not. It's very simple, okay? But we're going to have a look at both some hot wallets and some cold wallets. Um, one of my favorite cold wallets is the Ledger. Um, there's a discount for that too. I, I make y'all get it. But I do love the Ledger. I personally love the Ledger Nano S. I'm okay with the Ledger Nano X, but it has Bluetooth capability. And if I don't want it online, what do I want Bluetooth on it for? But that's your preference. They both there. It's up to you, but I love the ledger because it gives you access to your private keys. It gives you access to your seed phrases and it holds a large number of cryptocurrencies. One of the common misconceptions that comes up with the ledger is that people load cryptos on there. Say you've loaded five different currencies on there, right? And you try to load another one on there and it tells you that you don't have the space. Please understand that the Ledger Nano S device is only a remote. It doesn't actually have your information. When you purchase your ledger, it has you download something called Ledger Live. Ledger Live is the actual wallet where all of your cryptocurrencies are at. The ledger device is just the remote. So if you want to see them, then you put them on the ledger device. But remember, you can switch them out so that you can see different cryptocurrency assets on that device. And just because you switch them out doesn't mean you lose them. It just means that you'll, they'll all be visible on Ledger Live, okay? So yeah, I do, I love these devices. 
I, I do personally, I am a little biased towards the S because it does not have Bluetooth technology. I don't want it online, so I don't want Bluetooth. But if you like Bluetooth stuff, go for it. My entire house is like a smart house. All my light bulbs I can talk to and they go off. So I like smart stuff, just not when it comes to the crypto. Um, and then the next cold wallet is going to be our Trezor. I like Trezor. Trezor is a little less user-friendly as it relates to the two devices. Um, but this is one of the most secure cold storage wallets that I've ever come across. And you know, we do a lot of research. <laughs> um, but this is one of the most secure wallets. I love both of these wallets too, because they have built-in exchanges. So you can actually, y'all know we're supposed to be getting that five ETH. If for whatever reason, we need to change that ETH over into a stable coin, you're not going to have to move it onto an exchange or anything like that in order to do that type of transaction. You can do it right from inside of the device. And I love that. Um, so these are two of my recommendations for cold storage wallets. Perfect, right? And then hot wallets. Hot wallets. The, the top hot wallet that we use around here is Exodus. Um, what I want to do, let's do this really quick. I want to show you guys something on the Exodus website. And they are exodus.com. I love this website. It's absolutely awesome. The reason I say that is because there are 10,000 different cryptocurrencies in the space. And you actually don't have to log into your wallet to figure out which ones it holds. If you scroll down and click on see the full list, it's going to show you all the cryptocurrencies that it currently allows you to like store inside of this wallet. Currently, it supports 150 different cryptocurrency assets. Now, there are some days where the market is more volatile, where there's a little less liquidity than what's, what's normal. So you might not be able to make transactions. So like right here, it says certain exchange pairs are temporarily unavailable for Tether USD. I love coming to the website because I need everybody to understand every single time you log into your wallet, you are putting your cryptocurrency at risk. Every single time you log into anything, you are putting it at risk. If a virus gets on your computer that has a key logger, it can log you typing in your passwords. So we travel the road of least resistance and we travel the road of least typing, right? So the least amount of times that you have to type in your username and password to get to the information that you need, the better that is for you and your money in the long run. So you can come over here. You, If it's a new coin that Kurt pops out on the session and you want to see if you can put it in Exodus because it doesn't show you that on CoinGecko, cool. Go right over to the website, click the button. If you want to know if a certain coin can be staked inside of your Exodus, it gives you that information on the website without you having to log in. Do me a favor and have some fun the next time you go to your bank or your credit union. Ask them what the percentage is for a high savings account after you pull this up on your phone. You're going to laugh. <laughs> I did it the other day. My son asked the bank teller, um, like, what percentage do you get for high yield bank accounts? He asked the teller, she said, okay, I'm going to go and I'm going to ask for you. I'll ask the manager. She came back out. She said 0.2%. He looked at me. He said, so that's why we don't have a savings account here, huh? Do me, just go do it. It's go, go do it. Because from the mouths of babes, okay, it's hilarious because you can stake a coin Staking is just the same thing that you would do in your savings account. You put money in your savings account because you're not moving it, right? Well, we stake money because we ain't moving it. So if you put money into Cosmos or Atom, you can stake it at 9.63%. And your bank going to give you 0.2. What's the rate of inflation? 5% right now. 5%. Five, if the rate of inflation is 5%, why am I parking my money for 0.2? They're essentially taking my money. I don't want them to take my, run me my money, okay? So even the lowest asset in here is 1.3%, right? Yeah. So I absolutely love this. I absolutely love that. Um, so let's go back over here. Let's go. Where's my notes at? There we go. So I wanted to show you guys that have a poke around inside of um, the Exodus website 
it's definitely lots of information there. They have lots of YouTube, uh, what is it, walkthrough tutorials on there to show you how to use the website, how to use the wallet. Um, and you're going to hear us say this a thousand times, just because you can download it to your phone does not mean you should. Um, I have sitting on my desk, three different cell phones, okay? Three different cell phones. I have one cell phone that does not have anything on it but cryptocurrency. This is what I use to download exchanges to. This phone also does not leave my house, okay? I have another phone that does not have anything on it but my social media, okay? Fun fact, I need all of y'all to go into your social medias tonight and set up two-factor authenticator using Google Authenticator. If you got Facebook, if you got Instagram, you can do it. Coach's account was hacked when the T-Mobile breach happened, right? Like they hacked inside of his, into his, um, his IG. He could not post or get anything out of there. He wanted to make sure people weren't sending people messages trying to get Bitcoin too. After that happened, after we restored everything, we put on Google Authenticator because if someone gets your information from one of these breaches, they can get access to your social media and they can start soliciting your friends and family. We've seen this happen on Twitter. They were pretending to be celebrities asking for crypto. Don't put yourself in that, in that situation. Um, Instagram right now is not giving out blue checks for under $20,000. So it's a lot of accounts that are being duplicated. Okay, um, fun fact and pro tip. When you are posting on your social media, if you are making your own content, do me a favor and brand your content. And when I say brand it, what I mean is, you know how it's always an at? I'll show you guys the example. I'm gonna show you the example of what I put up today. Um, let me know if you guys can see this screen, like the little post. Let me know in the chat if y'all can see it. Cause I don't know if it's shared. Okay, perfect. So um, see how it has my name and the watermark in the background? It's like at Chrissy Pips. Chrissy Pips on everything, right? If you go through lots and lots and lots of my posts, you are always going to see at, or you're going to see a picture of me on all of my posts. Every single post that I have, you are going to see this a hundred million times over, right? At Chrissy Pips, you're always going to see this because when they start duplicating your account, it's gonna be really hard for your followers to not realize that what's on your page is different than the page that they clicked on, okay? And use carousels. It's hard for them to duplicate accounts to use a lot of carousels. Um, just a pro tip for your social media. Um, but moving right along, um, we talked about, oh yeah, you can earn crypto rewards inside of there too. And that's just from the staking part. I love it. It was 135, now it's 150. You can actually do exchanges inside of the Exodus wallet as well. I like the exchanges. Do me a favor. Stop talking about the fees, y'all. You can't get past the fee. You, you pay the fee. Now, what I will tell you is, if you want to pay less fees, look at gas first. If you go to CoinGecko, I'll show you all that too really quick. If you go to CoinGecko at the top of the screen, it says gas right here. If gas is under 40, make make do me a favor. And you can do transactions if it's under 40. I think the lowest I've seen it is eight. The highest I've seen it is 25,000. So pay attention to the gas fees. If gas fees are high, transaction fees are high and exchange fees are high, okay? So just pay attention to the gas fees. If you pay attention to the gas fees, transferring and making transactions inside of your wallet is not going to be a big deal, okay? I prefer to do transactions inside of my Exodus wallet because I have my private keys, I have my seed phrases, I have ownership, and it makes me very comfortable as opposed to doing it on an exchange which could shut down in the middle of a transaction and then Lord knows what would happen to it, right? So, I do definitely, definitely, definitely 
like that. Yep. Right. Tw yes. 25,000 in gas fees. It was horrible. I sent that to y'all in chat. Um, another hot wallet that we like to use is MetaMask. If you're doing transactions on exchanges like Uniswap, um, even, even um, PokeSwap, SushiSwap, all the swaps, if you're doing exchanges on those, they give you the ability to use MetaMask. Fun fact about MetaMask for these transactions, if you're using MetaMask, MetaMask only holds ERC-20 tokens. ERC-20 tokens are tokens that are built off of the Ethereum blockchain. So more fun facts, you guys. And this is being recorded, so you can go back. But if you look inside of your, because you're supposed to be writing down your private keys, when you write down your private keys to the things inside of your Exodus wallet, you're going to start seeing that some of the private keys are exactly the same. Your Exodus wallet has one ERC-20 token key. All of those coins will have that same key. That's what the MetaMask wallet is. It's one wallet with one key that holds multiple coins. So it's very important for you to check these websites and these apps before you are moving your cryptocurrencies to them. Because like I said, there are 10,000 different cryptocurrencies, but the Exodus wallet only holds 150. But if it's an ERC-20 token, you can transfer it there and it will be stuck. It is a very painful. I think it took me two weeks to help somebody get their coins out of there that they got in. It's painful and it's expensive. So just check first. You know how they say measure twice, cut once, do that. That's the that's thing. Um, but I do love this wallet because it gives you the ability to get your coins off of the exchanges so that they're not being stored there. It gives you the ability to do swaps inside of the wallet. It holds them, it's secure. You get your seed phrases. You get your keys. I love that about these wallets. That's why we're only recommending these because it gives you what you need to keep your cryptocurrency safe and secure. And because you will have already purchased your stone book or at least started writing things down in two different places every single time you go to an exchange, you know that your information is safe and it's backed up. If, you if your computer spontaneously combusts and you can't remember anything other than where what book you wrote down your seeds and your phrases in, you can download a new MetaMask to your computer and there's a button that's going to let you restore it. It's going to ask you for that 12 word seed phrase so you can restore your wallet and it's not lost. Right now, there's a guy in a state who is petitioning his state to be able to excavate the city dump because he lost his computer. He threw it away because he didn't think he needed it. He remembered several years later that that computer had Bitcoin on it. Several thousand Bitcoin that he had purchased under a dollar. Yeah. So right now he's petitioning his state to be able to excavate, to find that computer, to get it off of there. I don't know how well that's going to work, but don't be that guy. I say all of that to say, don't be that guy, okay? Now, Another thing that we go through is Blockfolio, which is now FTX, okay? So this is the last tidbit for the night, okay? So I want you all to get into the habit of tracking your transactions. And you do that through the FTX app, but do me a huge favor, download this app, but do not create an account. You can use this app without creating a username or password or doing any KYC. Do not try to purchase any cryptocurrency through here. My team simply uses this as a ledger that we can log into every day and we can actually look to see what our portfolio gains or losses or whatever are every single day, okay? So that is something that you wanna do. Inside of here, you're going to have the ability to, like, if you have something in your Exodus wallet, you create a little folder that says Exodus, right? And in that folder that says Exodus, you're going to put all of your transactions in there. How many of every coin that you have? Put the date in, too. If you put the date in, it'll help you kind of, like, better track it. Even for tax purposes, it's very helpful. Um, but 
gives you the ability to do that. And it gives you the ability to create multiples. Okay, so really quick, let me find it for you guys. I'm going to drop you a walkthrough video of how my team uses it. Let me move the zoom over there. Let me see really quick. Here we go. Okay, so I'll share this with you guys so that you can use FTX as well to track all of your transactions. Because remember, every single time you log in to your cryptocurrency wallets, to those exchanges, you are putting your cryptocurrencies at risk every single time. And we don't want to do that. We, we don't want to keep putting our cryptocurrencies at risk. But the fun part is, you know, tracking what we've earned, right? Keeping up with what we've earned. So this app gives you the ability to do just that. And like, you don't have anything to write down because you're not creating a username or password for this app, okay? So let's do this. I am going to open it up, Auntie J, when you are ready. Um, and we'll do some quick questions. I'm going to warn y'all in advance, if you ask me a question that can be answered through the favorites, because I will know that you did not watch the favorites, I am going to ask you to watch the favorites, because we've partnered with one of the top cryptocurrency educators in the world, who does his due diligence to make sure that we have every bit of information that we need. So ask questions, but be mindful. <laughs> Hey guys, okay, so that's gonna wrap up this video. I think I did Q&A for like another 40 minutes or so. Um, but let me know if this was helpful. Hopefully it was for you guys. It was definitely helpful to the team that had me on to just go over the information and some of the things that my team and I do. Um, remember, none of this is financial advice. Please do your research, back test, look at the information on your own to make sure that it's gonna work for you, your portfolio, your style of trading and investing. But I hope this was very helpful to some of you guys. Like I said, this is just some of my team's best practices, the things that I've shared with them. Um, and hopefully it works for some of you guys. If it does, make sure to share this content, this video with somebody who might need this information as well. But as always, I hope you guys are having an awesome and productive day. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.